So taking a look at these, you can see now we're getting into creating circles. And as we look into them, we're going to have to figure out ways to get things located or positioned correctly. For example, you see this first one in this box, the circle is located directly in the center of this rectangle. So we're going to look at this one and we're going to see that there's quite a few different ways of looking at this and creating this shape. Some of the other ones, you are stuck with one way of doing it. For example, this one in this box, there is one way. These two I will explain and we're going to use some different O, o snaps and mainly with this one, there is no O snap that we have to create a point going from here and then relocating the other one. So what we're going to do with that is that we're going to have to do a little bit of math and hopefully everyone can divide three and a half and we should get 1.5. This one, we're going to also take a look at locating these centers. And as you can see, most of the circle commands, they deal with locating the centers. This one, we're going to locate the center. And we can also locate this one by some O snaps and things of that nature. And this is our rare occasion that we cannot locate it by any by using the center, but we can use these lines as references. So we're going to take a look at doing that when we create this. So let's switch over to AutoCAD and start creating. Okay, so here in AutoCAD, I'm going to create a rectangle, and I'm just going to create the lower left corner at zero comma zero. So let's start with the rectangle command, which is located here. Instead of selecting or clicking my first point, I'm just going to type in 0, 0, and that's going to put my lower left corner at that coordinate. So once you type that in, hit the enter button. Now it's asking me, where do I want to put the upper right corner? In this case, I'm just going to make it a regular sheet of paper size. So I'll type in 11, comma, 8.5 enter let's go ahead and center our rectangle in the middle of our screen I'm just going to use the zoom extents command which is located here zoom out a little bit and now I'm going to create a couple of lines just to divide this in half but before we do that let's go ahead and make sure that we have all of our O snaps or our running O snaps in this case the same so you can see these are the common ones that I will have turned on. You can go ahead and pause the video here if you like and go ahead and copy the ones that I have turned on. We are going to use a geometric center in a little bit, but I'm going to leave it turned off and I'll show you how to invoke that one when we use it. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is create this line. I'll start from this midpoint and I'll go up to this midpoint. Now I have to escape out of the command, and if you can remember, one of those little shortcuts in AutoCAD is to just hit the enter button or the space bar. And if you hit that or select that on your keyboard, that should bring you back into the last command you just used. So it put me back in the line command and it's asking me to specify the first point. So I'll select this midpoint to that midpoint, and then hit the escape button again. Okay, so I'm going to start at this top left corner, and I'm going to create a rectangle that has the dimensions of 3.5 by 2.5. Okay, so those dimensions are located right on the drawing. This one, and this one. If we can do a little bit of math, we see that half of 3.5 is 1.75, so that just tells me that my circle is right in the center of this rectangle. So let's create the rectangle using the rectangle command again. I'm going to specify my first point and I'll just locate it somewhere along here. And then I'll type in the keys that I want for my next location. Remember that the X coordinate is first, so 3.5, comma, and then the Y coordinate, which is 3.5. Yep. I didn't check and make sure that I was in the rectangle command. Let's go back. Now I can see on my command line I am in the rectangle command. I'll select here. And then I'll type in 3.5, comma 
Now I have my rectangle and with this one I'm going to give you a couple of different ways of putting that circle in the middle. The first way we will do it is with a circle command using the center radius option. And now I'm going to use O snap tracking. Remember with O snap tracking I'm going to touch, do not click on this midpoint, and then I will touch this midpoint. And when I come down those two intersections will, will create a, a point for me to click on. So do a left click there and then go simply to this midpoint and you can see that it does create that circle. Let's go ahead and erase that circle and I'll show you another option, a way of doing that. So I can select the circle first and I'll select the erase icon. The delete button on your keyboard will also work and I'll show you that after I do the next one. Another way of creating this, or a much quicker way of creating it, is using a two-point circle. A two-point circle is nothing more than you specifying the diameter of the circle using two points. So I'll click this midpoint at the bottom, and then I'll click the midpoint at the top. So now I have that circle also located right in the middle. I'll select my circle, and this time I'll select the delete button on my keyboard. The last way of doing this is using the circle center radius command that I did before. And since I created this with a rectangle, it gives it special properties. Rectangle, if you remember, is a polyline, so it does have a geometric center. And it has area and volume, well not volume, but it does have an area and a perimeter that can be solved in AutoCAD or, or displayed. But in this case, I'm going to hold down the shift button right click, let go of the shift button, and then I will select geometric center. Once I select geometric center, you're going to see that when I come toward my rectangle, I'll get a star in the middle. Go ahead and click on that star, and then click the midpoint. Let's take a look at the next one here along the top. So I'm going to go to the top right box. I'll start with the line command. I'll select somewhere along here. So I'm specifying my first point. Once again, my tracking is on. If you don't want to use tracking, you can also use the ortho mode. So if I select that, I can simply point this direction and type in 4. And now I have to give it this angle going along this way. So if you have O snap tracking turned on, you can use that, or we can key them in. In this case, I'm just going to switch to O snap tracking, and you'll notice that I'm doing this while I'm in the command. So I'm just going to select that icon here, and I verified first that I was using the 45, 90, 135, and 180 as my angles. So now you can see that I can get it to track or snap going that direction. Type in 4, enter, and then escape. Now I have to locate the center of this circle. And as you can see on this circle, I have no dimensions of telling me where this is. The only thing that I do have is a diameter. So I want you to make sure that you notice that this says a diameter. The little symbol in the front with the line going through it represents diameter. If it's a radius, it will have an R in front of it. We'll get to that in a later example. So let's go ahead and place this circle amongst these two lines. So since I do not have any dimensions specifying to that, but I do have two lines, one thing that is special about circles and tangency is that if I can get the tangency of these lines, I can figure out where that circle at and let AutoCAD figure out the placement of the center. So the command that I'm going to use is the tangent tangent radius. You'll notice at the end of this command it says radius. Our problem is given to us with a diameter symbol. So I'll use the tangent tangent radius. I'll select anywhere along this line and anywhere along this line. Now it's asking me what's the radius of my circle. If you can remember back that the diameter is two times the radius, or in other hat, or in other words, the diameter or the radius is half the di diameter. So I'm going to type in one for the radius that I have, 
and then that circle should be placed in between those two lines. Let's take a look at the one here on the lower left corner. And now we have two circles and we have to figure out whether to specify them. One of the first things that I need to do is I need to determine which circle am I going to create first or if I can create one of these first or I have to or I'm constricted by only creating one of them first. So what I'm going to do is decide which circle can I create first and in this case I can create either one. I tend to like to start with my bigger circles so I'm going to create this circle and just specify a center point and then I'm going to use that to define the center of my second circle. Okay so let's go ahead and create our first circle that has a diameter of 3. So I'll choose circle, center diameter, place it here and give it its diameter which is 3. Now I know this is sticking outside of our drawing for right now we're not going to worry about that. In later videos I'll show you how to correct this so we will continue on. Next I need to specify my next circle. Now if you use AutoCAD and you do not click anywhere else you do have the option of hitting the enter button which remember takes you back to the last command and AutoCAD remembers the last point. So if I just start typing from here Remember the X coordinate first, 1.5, comma, 1.677, and hit the enter button, and it looks like it did misplace my last point. So I'm going to go ahead and redo that one again. I'll choose circle, center diameter. In this case, it looks like my it doesn't remember my last point. So I'll do a shift and right click and choose the from that's used in my OSNAP selection list here. I want you to physically click on that circle, center point. If you're not getting the center point to show up, simply touch the edge of your circle and you'll get the plus in the middle. Then click on that plus. Now anytime you use the from command, you have to type in the at symbol. So do a shift and the number 2 button and that'll be your at symbol. Now let's type in 1.5 comma 1.677 enter and now it's asking me to specify my diameter in this case is 1.5 enter. Let's take a look at our last example here and now we have to decide which circle can we create first. Out of the three circles that you see listed, I can only choose two of them. I can either do this circle or this circle. And I can't specify this one because I really don't know where the center is located. As you can see that I have dimensions telling me where the centers are located amongst the two smaller circles. The big circle, I do not have any dimension or referencing telling me where the center is located. So that's one of those ways when you're trying to determine which circle to create first. So I'm going to create the smaller circles on the outside and then we'll locate the bigger circles. Okay, so I'll start with creating a circle, center diameter. I'm going to place the center of that circle along here and the diameter is 2. Now I know this one is going to stick on the outside of this rectangle that I have created. Don't worry about it. We'll figure out how to do this later. Next I'll create the other circle located from this one. So circle, center diameter. I'm going to shift and right click and choose the from option. Click on this center. Remember, if your center is not showing up, just make sure you just hover. Do not click on it. The edge of your circle and click the center. So once you've clicked that center, you have to physically type in the at symbol. So from when you're using that from command, 
type in at 2 comma 2 enter and since it's the same diameter as my last circle I don't have to type in the diameter I can just hit enter now I'm able to create my other circle on the outside the command that we used earlier was the tan tan radius so select tangent tangent radius and this one it really does matter where you select your tangent points from make sure that you select them here along the inside somewhere here and likewise on this side remember that it's asking me for a radius so I'm gonna type in 1.5 and not 3 okay so hopefully that all makes sense on how we created these and once again do not worry about the rectangle that's around it I just use those to separate them so let's go ahead and select these lines in our rectangle and erase them and we can use that as a good reference to keep our shapes a little bit separated 